Randy, those are poison. How poison? Put it down. Yeah, there was a huge period of time where I would only eat while riding the bike, um, which is not healthy or sustainable. And, you know, it's for sure trading one mm -hmm. addiction for another at that point. Have you been that way with a lot of stuff, like even with like your acting career? Like when you got it, when you get into something and when you get going on something, is it I do kind of go, tunnel vision? Yeah, I do go pretty hard into stuff <laughs> I get into. I am in this moment really trying to just practice like true overall lifestyle changes mm. that that are not too extreme. Right. You know, I tend to spend only an hour in the gym mm. a day, which I think I can maintain. Right. Things that are simple, they might not be easy, but they're simple and, yeah. and they're sustainable. Did you start out, uh, you know, boom, go into like 1500 calories or did you start out like uh, cutting back on like soda and maybe some just not such great habits no it's, it's strangely i started out with the walks where i would just make sure to walk every day and it and and you know i find that the, must have been really hard being that big because you probably didn't want to move that much right? yeah no i didn't but i uh with the phone the phone would tell me how many steps mm -hmm. and whether it's that accurate or not i found that if i just made sure that there was some baseline and so if i didn't get ten thousand steps I had to go walk around my living room or walk around mm. the block until I got it. A, a and goal, was, right? Yeah, having some goal mm -hmm. of movement was really key. And then dietary, what was this? Just the changes you started to make? I went keto for years, and I would find that if I was doing like my version of like lazy keto, that I wouldn't lose weight, and that if I kind of fine-tuned it, I would start to lose mm -hmm. weight again. You'd still have to figure out a way, this is important, you still have to always figure out a way to eat less than you were at, at some other point, which is a very hard and sometimes confusing thing, so you don't really know your baseline. Uh, Where did you kind of go from there? So you did some keto. Did you were you able to lose some weight from there? Yeah, yeah. I I, I found keto to be super awesome, and for weight loss, uh, I just got to a point where I wasn't seeing the muscle definition that I wanted, and so I I then like went and looked at a bunch of like bodybuilding stuff and was like, okay, if I enter in carbs and I'm in a caloric deficit, like religiously, let's see what that does, and that's what I've been doing for the last 50 pounds. Mm. And I, I, it's been, yeah. I, I've really liked it. For, you know, my whole life, my parents, we lived in Los Angeles, so it was a lot of like, um, suddenly this thing is bad and, mm -hmm. and you know, we're gonna cut out gl gluten or something right. like that. And it was like this series of- Eggs and, are bad right. one week and something else is bad the next. And yeah. you're like, I don't know what's going on. And I've basically been on like a quote unquote bodybuilder cut for like six months with some maintenance periods and and I look forward to getting below 10% body fat and then trying to do a, a, a massing phase. Mm -hmm. Like that's really exciting. I haven't done that yet though. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, just like being mindful of food and mm -hmm. knowing like what, what my caloric intake should be for maintenance and then dropping it down by 20%. It was so much more work than I was used to because I was used to just no complex carbs I could drink olive oil, eat steaks, mm -hmm. have cheese, and as long as I was doing that, I was pretty much okay. So this was completely foreign of weighing chicken, <laughs> measuring rice, you know, making sure I got fiber and taking my omega-3 so that I wasn't zero fat. Um, it was very hard, but then, and I also started gaining weight for a few days, mm -hmm. which was terrifying. Um, You're like, what's happening? I, yeah, I was like, and, and I almost didn't make it. Like day three, I was eight pounds heavier, and I was like, this is insane. It could have just been the carbohydrates. It could have been yeah. the hydration attaching to the carbs. Carbohydrate hydrates the muscles, hydrates the body. So it could have even just been that. But also it could have just been the fact that like you didn't really know where your calories were. So even though you were measuring and paying attention, uh, did you have to lower them from there or just you were fine? I, you I, I white knuckled my way through it and then it started going down. Within a week, I was slightly less than mm. where I started, but there were three days of weight gain where I was like, this is 
this is insane. How, right. Why am I doing Very this? Very smart of you though, to be patient because three days is not like it, it's frightening when you see that scale go. Pshh. You're like, what? <laughs> like, what happened? You know, am I backed up? Like, what, what's going on here? Yeah. But uh, being patient is is really uh, kind of a key element. And then your body will, your body will get used to the nutrients that you're taking in, and then it will find, uh, you know, it'll find comfort in what you're doing, and then you'll be able to start to drop weight again. Yeah, yeah. And after, after, it it did take a while to to get used to measuring stuff and and understanding the calorie values in like a cup of rice and a big chicken breast mm. and uh and and now it's really easy the only person who really even matters is my wife and uh she would always say every time you go on a strict diet we gain weight because <laughs> i would like take my desires for food and sublimate them into cooking stuff that i wouldn't even eat but i'm <laughs> suddenly serving my wife and kids all this food that like Oh, I can't eat fresh made pasta, so I'm going to make it for you and I'm going to watch you eat it, which is a little bit sick too. <laughs> um, but when I went to like counting calories and, and low fat, I was spending so much time prepping food that I was like, you guys make your own food. And she was like, kind of like, what are you, you know, <laughs> yeah, right. we, we need dinner. And right. I'm like, okay, you can have a chicken breast and a cup of rice. That's your dinner. Mm -hmm. Like I made plenty of that. Um, right. So it's been... That's kind of been uh, a bit of a struggle, but she's so supportive that, you know, whatever whatever I decide to do, she backs me up. You still count and track stuff nowadays? Yeah, yeah, I count. I mean, I'm counting until, I think I'll probably be easier on myself when I'm in a massing mm -hmm. phase, right. but I'm counting until I get to 9% body fat. Yeah, yeah, I'm not changing it until I get there. And, uh, and it's slowed down and I have to drop calories even more and then, hit maintenance periods mm -hmm. kind of more often, but it is working. And maintenance periods, by the way, I want to say, is not like I'm going to eat whatever I want. It's right. the same diet with slightly more calories. Do you still squeeze in some stuff that you want here and there where you're yeah. like, you know what, I'm just totally dying for some Ben and Jerry's. I'm just going to go for it. I, I There's a, a burger place called Burgers Never Say Die near my house, and that is what I dream about. <laughs> it's like a double cheeseburger, and they have fries, cooked in just beef calls tallow. calls you in the middle of yeah. the night for some oh reason, right? Oh my God. And they do do like a Carvel soft serve too. So it's like a, a trifecta of beef fat fries, smash burgers, and mm. soft serve. And I do have that, not very often, maybe once every six weeks. That's right. about as, as often as I do that. What's a trigger food that will send you down the wrong path? Like, you know, learning from coming down from being so heavy before. What were some things where you might have eaten it, like a, you have some pizza or something like that, and then you find yourself off the diet for four or five days? I found that any time I did a quote-unquote cheat day or a cheat meal that I went into blindly would derail me. If I just was like looking forward to Sunday, and Sunday I'm going to eat whatever I want, and then by the time Monday rolls around I'm sick because I've eaten so much, that would really affect me. So I started to plan it out really detailed, also with the, the hopes that I wasn't wrecking everything I'd done mm. for the week, you know what I mean? Like, I'm gonna have a pizza, but how many calories are in a pizza and how, how much do I have to offset that? Do I have to put in a little bit more movement that day right. to balance it? And, and so it was kind of anything that I did um, without planning or emotionally would derail me a lot of people get caught up in uh, holidays a lot of people get caught up in vacation they're like i'm going on vacation and i've been looking to go into cancun for the whole year and i'm going to be there for a week i'm not going to exercise i'm just going to you know f all the training and just screw it all man i'm just going to like let loose and that could be that could possibly work for you but for people that are coming down from uh, being obese, it, it's a real slippery slope. So you have to be very, very careful. And I like that you said you planned it. What do you mean by you planned it though? Did you like write it down or did you kind of have it kind of circled on the calendar? Like, hey, I'm gonna like screw up here or not even screw up, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna have a cheat meal right here and I'm going to allow myself to do that. Next day, I'm right back on track. Yeah, I, I would plan it down to like, here's exactly what I'm gonna eat. Here's the amount I'm gonna eat. And, and if it, I would plan it in a way that I would still give myself restrictions. So it wasn't just like, 
I can go into an all-you-can-eat buffet and eat until I'm sick. It was, I'm gonna have this food, and if I have this food and then my kid orders dessert, I'm not having a bite of that dessert because that's not part of the plan. Mm. I like it. Yeah. All right, we're gonna get into our workout. That was our warm-up, just talking. Yeah. Were you heavy as a kid? Yeah. Even when you were like nine and eight and stuff? I was 200 pounds when I was 10. Wow. But if you, I found, if you present your kid, or my kids at least, with a healthy meal that's mm -hmm. got clean meat and right, right. or fish and uh, protein and uh, some kind of carbohydrate that's not super processed, mm -hmm. my kids like it. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I mean, if you have, what if you have like a sweet potato, some chicken, yeah. uh, my kids both like dairy, they like milk, they like cottage cheese. Um, they like a lot of, you know, they like, a, they, when you th really think about it, you break it down, they do like a lot of things that are healthy. What I think might be a mistake though is trying to replace something that is junk food right. with like fake health food because it right. just is missing, it's missing what it's supposed to taste like. So rather than try to dance around all that stuff, maybe just say, hey, you'd just be better off with some meat yeah. and some healthy carbohydrate options and maybe some veggies and you'll be set. Yeah, and then if they, it does taste good. Right, yeah. Strawberry, it tastes good. Yeah. Yeah, I've never had my kids turn down a fruit salad made with real fruit. For the majority of losing weight, no, I ate kind of fattier meats. I would eat, if I was going to eat chicken, it would be a thigh. Right. Or, or with the skin on, you know. Mm -hmm. Now I'm eating almost entirely right. lean meat. I eat beef very rarely, uh, but I found a 96.4 mm -hmm. that still tastes good. grind that's good. You can't overcook it or it tastes terrible but if you barely cook it it's really good right. um, and then you can get a lean steak no problem right I have found it true I can fire on fat or carbohydrates if I'm doing something that requires ketosis I just found it hard to get quite as much protein as I'm trying to get right now for this specific goal which has nothing to do with overall weight loss. It's trying just to maintain muscle. That's literally all I'm trying to do. So I think long term, I'll, I probably will be on some version of keto just because it's less constant thought, you know? Right, right. You get to kind of just eat without constantly thinking about it. Like right. if I pretty much just don't eat carbohydrates, not that you can be totally reckless. No but you can be less worried about it. And, yeah. you know, and then plus you learned a lot. You know, you basically went to like dietitian school or whatever you want to call it because you learned so much from being so heavy to now. I would even say that you have a completely different knowledge base and maybe a better knowledge base than even maybe some, well, I would say even than a lot of doctors. Some right. people might be like, hey, well, that's not true. But I would say when you lived it and you understand the conditions of obesity, I, I was a big guy. I was heavy. I was 330 pounds, but I was also a 330 pound power lifter. And I don't know what he felt like. I never went through school as like the fat kid. I wasn't like, I didn't look around and be like, I am the fattest kid in this grade. I'm the fattest kid in this area. I'm fat. I never, I never dealt with that, but I know a lot of people do. And this is someone I would imagine you had to deal with a lot of that. Overcoming that is is a crazy and insane battle. I want to try to help people get through that and get past that. But again, I don't. I have empathy towards it. I never lived that part of it. So while I was big, I never was on that side of the fence. And I really think it's admirable on what he's done. It's it's amazing. It's really cool. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm I'm. I get. I, I have a mixture of looking in the mirror and feeling total pride and looking in the mirror and feeling uh, completely overwhelmed with how much more I have to do, <laughs> you know? <laughs>